Hi, today you're going to learn how to create these abstract colorful morphing objects inside of Cinema 4D without any plugins. If you like you can also animate these abstract morphing objects. It's pretty simple and I will show it later in the tutorial. If you like what I do you can check out my Instagram, it's at Justin's Posters. Go follow me there, maybe you get some inspiration from the things that I post over there. Let's get started with this tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is setting up our scene. I've already done it. I've just changed the renderer to physical, the width to 700 and the height to 800. And that's pretty much it. Now we're gonna add a sphere object, put the segments to 60. And now let's position a camera. Go into the camera. Let's set the focal length to portrait mode and set the rotation H value to zero and the P value also to zero and click apply. Okay, let's re reorientate ourselves. Um, let's get the camera position also to zero, click apply. Let's zoom out a bit. And now we've got our sphere perfectly centered. You can copy these values if you want. I like um, putting the camera to zero so you don't have any fisheye effects. And now let's create some more spheres. I'm gonna copy this one and maybe change the size. Let's make it a bit smaller. I'm gonna put it over here. And now we're gonna put both of these inside of a metaball tag. It's right over here. Now take both of these spheres and just drag them into the metaball. It looks pretty janky, what, uh, but we're gonna get rid of that. Let's change the editor subdivision to five. And now it's already pretty smooth. And yeah, now we can pretty much just get the basic shape of our object. Just try some uh, adding some bubbles and uh, changing the position of them until you like what you see. Also something you can activate in the metaball tag is accurate normals. It can be pretty demanding on your CPU, but if you have a somewhat decent PC, I think uh, you can handle it. I'm gonna fast forward now and show you what I came up with in the end. You should do the same and just try around with the spheres until you like what you created. Now, this is the shape that I have came up with. Let's add a displacement tag to our meta ball. You can find it right here. And let's put it into the meta ball tag right at the end. Go to shading, add a noise. Let's go into the noise and change the noise type to electric. Let's put the octaves to one, the global scale to 800. Let's add an animation speed. Let's take 0 0.8 maybe. We can change all these values later. That's just the foundation I'm gonna give you to uh, work your way towards your final artwork. Cycles, we need to put to 1.4. And now let's uh, change the sliders down here. Let's take the low clip maybe to 45. And the high clip maybe to 50. You can play around with this until you find something that you like. Hmm, okay. Now maybe I'm gonna put the low clip to 15 this time. And because we changed the animation speed, we can 
uh, let's add some frames first let's go to 200 frames and now we can play an automatically generated animation of the displacement we applied right here I think it looks very satisfying yeah and you basically can just scroll through this timeline um, yeah until you find a look that you enjoy again I'm gonna change some of these values because I'm not quite happy with what I've got and I'm gonna come back and explain to you what I changed after I'm done so now I'm pretty satisfied with what I've got you can uh, copy these settings if you want but I encourage you to try some own personal values that you like even more. One more thing that I changed is if you click on displacement and go to the object tab, I changed the height to 34 just to take everything to the a bit more extreme. And I also added a smoothing tag, which just helps getting rid of these janky edges. Let's now add some materials to this. Double click down here to create a new material. Now double click on the material itself. I think first we're gonna add the glassy type of object which will reflect a texture we're going to add later. I'm gonna put the refraction to 1.6 because that's a value that works for me. Maybe I'm gonna change it later, I don't know. Let's close this and add it onto our meta ball. You can get a second view panel like I did right here if you go to window and click on new view panel and then you can just click and drag it onto here. But I've already got one so if you edit this you can click into this new view panel and press alt R to open up the live renderer. We can't see anything yet because we have no light. Let's take care of that. We're gonna get, add an HDRI. So take another sphere. I'm gonna call it HDRI. And I'm gonna increase the size a lot until we are inside of the HDRI. And now we've already got some light. Let's add a new material and uncheck reflectance and color again and let's add luminance and now we're going to add a texture we can download off the internet i'm going to put a link into the description where you can find um, some of these not all of these you can also search on unsplash or maybe just um, do a google search when you edit a material you enjoy, you can go to mix mode and set it to multiply. And let's maybe add some brightness. Let's take 120 and drag it onto our HDRI. So now we can right click on the HDRI, add a Cinema 4D tag. Let's add compositing and uncheck scene by camera. So we just see our morphing object and not the HDRI background. I'm gonna let this render for a bit. Uh, maybe set the brightness to 140. Uh -huh. I'm gonna increase the quality of this render by sliding up this little arrow. Maybe make it a bit smaller. Yeah, we'll definitely change the texture. I don't like it that much. I think I'm gonna edit the material that's doing the refraction of the texture. Yeah, I definitely like this way better. What I did is I changed the texture again and I went back into the transparency and set re the refraction to plexiglass or 1.488. And I forwarded to frame 29. 
This is the test render I did, just did. And as you can see, there are some edges still on this object. I think we can try to get rid of these with a subdivision surface. Let me try that. Okay, um, the subdivision surface definitely, definitely did way too much. Um, I removed it because we have lost a lot of detail, which I did not like. Um, maybe let's put in the smoothing tag, the iterations up to, let's take 25. Let's try that. Okay. Still looks like there are some edges right there. But let's do another test render and let's see. This is the final result. What I did to get rid of these kind of jagged edges and polygon errors is just go into the Metaball tag and change the editor and render subdivisions to one. The last thing I'm going to do inside of Cinema 4D is pretty much just add some add some uh, depth of field. Now we can go into the camera, into the physical tag and change the f-stop to maybe one. And you can already see everything is getting pretty blurry. Now we can go into object, click on this little icon to focus the object. I'm gonna click in the center pretty much. And now we're going to get some more depth of field inside of our render. It's just gonna look more interesting. Some areas are perfectly focused and others are a bit blurry. I'm gonna do another last test render to see if I like the depth of field effect and then we can export it. This is my final render. Now let's export this. I actually changed the f-stop to 0 0.5 because one was not enough. Now I'm pretty much just gonna export this. Nothing special to my desktop and let's set this to PNG. Activate alpha channel so we can export it without a background. And yeah I think that's pretty much it. Of course, we have to change the width and height of this. I think I'm gonna take 4,000 by 5,000. Let's center this. And now I can click render. The last thing we're gonna do is add some finishing touches and then we can export this. So now let's get into the filter section and click on camera raw filter. And I'm just gonna add some highlights, maybe increase the contrast and maybe adjust some colors. These are my settings, you can copy them if you want to. And now I will change the background to something brighter. Let's maybe take this kind of gray, I think. Mm, maybe let's add some color into it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have this gray mixed in with some blue. I'm gonna copy this rasterize the layer and I will liquefy it. 
With the liquefied tool you can pretty much just go crazy. I like to uh, just morph it a little more until I like it. Yeah, this is the difference between the standard render and the liquefied version. And now we can export it. Thanks for watching this tutorial. This is the final result. Please leave a like and follow me on Instagram. It's at Justin's Posters. If you followed this tutorial, you can also tag me on Instagram. And yeah, have a nice day. Bye.